Hello, I'm Charlie Smith. I teach and research in the architecture programmes at Liverpool John Walls University. This presentation explores some different manifestations of the relationship between teaching and research. The conflicting views over this relationship include whether it has a positive, neutral or detrimental impact on the students' learning experiences. This frequently manifests in a complex and oftentimes contentious association between teaching and research, not least in where academics' priorities should lie. For example, there is evidence to suggest that national research audits can isolate research from teaching at both institutional and individual levels. It has also been argued that there is no simple functional relationship between quality of research and quality of teaching, where they are often organised separately with limited thought given to how they might be linked. This presentation explores three different constructions of the research teaching nexus. It questions how they can best affect positive contributions to students and academics higher education experience. A central argument lies in the conception that both research and teaching revolve around learning by both students and teachers. The presentation reflects on research projects within each interpretation. A key concept is defined as being the direction of travel between teaching and research. In research informed teaching, discipline specific research informs the curriculum, even if conducted independently. This research may be undertaken by an academic who then goes on to incorporate it within their teaching. One significant value in this approach is that students learning embodies the most recent developments within the discipline and is therefore progressive and at the forefront of knowledge. This is the most conventional conception of the teaching research nexus. However, it is one of questionable significance. In their meta study, Hattie and Marsh conclude that the correlation between teaching quality and research productivity is effectively zero. Writing in the context of built environment disciplines, Griffiths identified two ways in which research informed teaching might manifest. His concern with the former is that it may reinforce traditional transmission orientated approaches to teaching. This can result in a one way street between them, thereby limiting students agency within the process. Furthermore, it could be argued that this approach reinforces the division between research and teaching and their conception as two independent activities whereby teaching benefits only from the product of research and not the process itself. Research tends to be practiced and redirected outside of the practice of teaching, potentially to the detriment of teaching quality. The term itself implies that research comes before teaching, that research leads teaching so as to inform what students should be learning, rather than research and teaching being perceived as symbiotic processes that are of equal value. Another issue associated with Griffith's definition is that the teaching curriculum is structured around content based on the specialist and potentially idiosyncratic research interests of the teacher. However, as Hattie and Marsh highlight, research informed teaching does not necessitate that teachers are the author of the research and that they have to generate research in order to be effective teachers. As such, teachers with an enthusiastic scholarship of their discipline, although not active researchers themselves, can inform their teaching so that it remains at the forefront of knowledge in the discipline. Teaching can thereby reap the benefits of a research informed approach but without manifesting some of the tensions of the research teaching nexus. I have conducted a number of research projects in the field of library design. These include studying how these civic institutions are changing in response to the digital revolution, 
the crisis of public sector funding and the changing patterns of occupancy and use. This research has been utilised to inform studio design projects for architecture students in the second and final years of their undergraduate degree. When preparing background reading material for the project, my research outputs were deliberately not included in order to minimise the extent to which my own findings influence the student's creative exploration. However, the understanding of issues facing this building type gleaned through my research have informed writing the briefing documentation and compiling reference material to encourage the students to reflect on and engage with the salient issues that face this building type. Similarly, relevant research by others, along with exemplary precedents, have informed the teaching process itself. One striking outcome of these projects, reinforced over several years, is that students always find a primary place for physical books within their libraries, although the symbolism behind their inclusion varies considerably. Time is one of, if not the most, precious resource, as more of it cannot be created. Academics' time is increasingly torn between different demands, including teaching, research and administration. This is one dimension through which tension within the research teaching nexus occurs. Where teaching and research are conceived as two separate activities that are, that are isolated from each other, this tension will be exacerbated as two independent priorities strive for attention. Arguably, there must be more fruitful means through which to conceptualise and practise the research teaching nexus. One of these is students collaborating in research projects with their teachers. Ken Robinson describes research as the systematic inquiry for new knowledge. He questioned why creativity is often not considered to be research as a source for new knowledge in an academic sense. Research through teaching places students' creative project work at the core of discipline-specific research, so that teaching becomes the catalyst for co-producing research by students and teachers. Students' projects become embedded within wider contexts of real-world problems, grounding their work outside of the academy. It is here that the design studio can gain traction as a vehicle for research through experimentation and critical discourse. Original thinking and innovation are fundamental elements of studio design processes. Indeed, given that inquiry-based learning is inherent to creative exploration, research through teaching is especially suited to design disciplines. Student projects in the form of project-based learning provide material for research. They generate the medium for analysis against wider concepts and issues, and it is here that the main research through teaching processes lie. To put it another way, the students' projects are the research data. What is not being discussed here is the established practice of teachers and doctoral research students collaborating. Rather, the much less common practice of undergraduate and taught postgraduate students working in conjunction with their studio tutors on research projects. This approach places student project work at the core of discipline specific research. So teaching becomes the catalyst for co-producing work by students and teachers, working partnerships with students as researchers. Thomas identifies the value of activities that encourage collaboration and engagement between students and members of staff in nurturing student engagement in a richer manner. Research through teaching provides an opportunity to recast the student-teacher power dynamic so that students and teachers become equal partners in the development of research projects. In this sense, the research through teaching approach can be aligned with Neary and Wynne's concept of student as producer. It is an approach that can rebalance the student-teacher power dynamic and facilitate collaborative research which addresses real issues 
within society at large. A critical factor when designing coursework to explore research through teaching is that briefs for inquiry-based projects should be developed around a theme that is pertinent in the context of contemporary issues outside of the university. Examples of this might include housing, which faces numerous challenges over a chronic shortage of provision within the UK. An example of research through, te research through teaching involves students enrolled on the first year of the taught postgraduate architecture programme. During the second semester, students engage in a housing design project. A raft of challenges face housing design in the UK, at the forefront of which is a triumvirate of interrelated needs to make housing more spacious, more affordable and more sustainable. Each is important in its own right, but are they reconcilable? The students were challenged to translate these three objectives into their design proposals. As theoretical projects, they were inherently permitted a high degree of intellectual and creative freedom. And as a result, these designs push boundaries in exploring what housing could be. One of the challenges in research through teaching, especially in creative disciplines, is that students' project work is inherently divergent. Their trajectory can be unpredictable, tangential and unexpected. Whilst potentially disconcerting for the teacher researcher, this quality lies at the essence of what makes the process valuable as a research methodology, where the creative insight of numerous different minds exploring the same problem can reveal unanticipated outcomes and solutions. Another potential issue is that, like research-informed teaching, the field of inquiry that establishes the topic of project briefs is based on the specialist, potentially idiosyncratic research interests of the teacher. Should it be that students' coursework is directed in this way and that it is utilised as the data for their teacher's research outputs? In a market-driven sector where discourses of students as consumers are rife, the notion, that the notion of students as partners can represent a counter-narrative to the consumer model. This might create a new tension in the research teaching nexus, or it could provide an opportunity to rethink how students define the path of their own learning and higher education experience, and how their learning can positively impact society outside the academy. Nevertheless, students may question why they are contributors to their teacher's research and how they benefit from it. Students' learning experiences may gain more advantage from research orientated towards enhancing pedagogic practices, to which we turn to next. Whilst pedagogic research has gained considerable traction over the recent past, it is argued here that research, research of the methods and practices of learning and teaching can be perceived as having less significance and value than discipline specific research. This undermines its legitimacy and currency to the detriment of enhancing the quality of students' learning experiences, creating another dimension of tension within the research teaching nexus. The nature of student participation differs from that of research through teaching. In the latter, they are partners within the research process. In research of teaching, Students participate through sharing their experiences of learning, teaching and assessment methods. This may be to understand the cognitive processes involved, how students learn, or to understand the impact of different pedagogic approaches on their learning experience, identifying what they value and what they do not. Whilst those within the upper echelons of university management often place significant credence on student evaluation surveys, those at an academic level can see less value in them, questioning the validity of data where response rates are low, or being dismissive of respondents questioning established learning and teaching methods and subject content. Dissenting teachers might argue that students are not in a position to know whether or not particular teaching assessment methods are appropriate and of value to their learning. 
The mirror can reveal harsh realities, which for some may prove uncomfortable viewing. However, without insight into students' learning experiences, teachers are blind to the consequences of their actions and cannot act to improve the quality of learning. Capturing the student voice effectively can prove challenging. Online surveys are often afflicted by low response rates. Distributing questionnaires in class may return higher response rates. However, transcribing the resulting data can prove very time consuming. This is an opportunity to recruit students as, as interns to assist with transcription and data analysis, creating an additional dimension through which to engage students as collaborators in research projects. An alternative method for capturing the student voice is focus groups, where a small group of students are brought together to discuss a topic. A significant benefit is that discussion around the subject can open up dialogue and understanding, revealing hidden perceptions that may otherwise go unvoiced. The groups are usually facilitated by a moderator to guide the discussion, encourage debate, and for all participants to engage. However, in pedagogic research, where the moderator is also a member of academic staff, participants may be reticent to voice their true feelings for fear of subsequent retribution or bias. Here again lies the opportunity to recruit students as research assistants. Again, they can transcribe the discussion and assist with analysis. Design teaching is often strongly associate, associated with a socio-constructivist pedagogy, where meaning is co-constructed through a social process of collaborative interaction. Using focus groups and interviews as part of the research of teaching, thereby aligned research methods with teaching methods, creating a discourse driven environment that is very familiar to the students. This may go some way to explaining why design students can be so forthcoming with their views, which attributes significant value and potential to the process. Asking students to volunteer to participate in a research project can result in recruiting only those who are more engaged and forthcoming in sharing their views. This has the potential to skew the resulting data by omitting the views of less engaged or more reticent students. Anonymous questionnaires may reach the more reticent, but do not facilitate the two-way dialogue of focus groups. The recruitment process and the resulting data therefore need careful consideration. One strength in research of teaching is that learning teaching assessment methods, both within and across programmes, can be enhanced through the outcomes that emerge. And furthermore, through the same research project, teachers can produce research outputs by writing up their project for publication. A key concept explored through this presentation is the direction of travel between teaching and research. Research informed teaching can lead to a one way street, which in turn can foster a positivist model of teaching where students are passive, passive recipients of knowledge. A more proactive approach, where the direction of travel is largely reversed to go from teaching to research, is research through teaching. Students become active participants in research projects, increasing their agency within their higher education experience. In research of teaching, there is a similarly constructive relationship within the nexus, but here, research serves to evolve teaching and learning methods to enhance students in higher education experience. Hattie and Marsh suggest that a central aim over the research teaching nexus is to increase the circumstances in which teaching and research have occasion to meet. That relationship can be sig significantly affected by the pedagogic methods of the programme. Both research and learning are informed by the modes of inquiry characteristic to the discipline in which they take place. Teachers can bring the processes of knowledge creation into their teaching rather than specific outcomes associated with their research. Arguably, studio teaching with inquiry and problem-based learning supported by one-to-one -one tutorials is highly suited to fostering closer links between the two. Thank you.